This video covers an introduction to the information technology unit to creating systems to manage information paper for Market Pool College. Um, it was that on part A the 16th of January 2023 and part B was that on the 17th of January 2023. So what I'm going to do in this video is just do a quick recce of the paper and give you the little pointers and tips regarding exam strategy technique. So first page, we've just got some general instructions uh, about the whole paper. Part A and Part B are separate. Part A has got 40 marks, Part B 26, giving a total 66 marks. You'll be given material for Part A and Part B and you must only access Part A during the Part A exam and have access to the Part B materials in Part B of the exam. Part A and Part B are going to be submitted together and you must answer all the activities. So the total mark for this paper Part A is 40 marks. The first page on the paper has instructions for the invigilators and um, we'll see a lot of these instructions be repeated when we look at the instruction to the candidate. The second page is the outcomes for submission. So each learner is going to create a folder to submit the work and the folder should be named according to this naming convention. So the centre number, the registration number, that's BTEC, not your student number in college, underscore, surname, underscore, first letter of first name and underscore part A. You will be told your centre number and your registration number and you will also be told where you need to save this folder. So, for example, if we have Joshua Smith with the registration number of F180542 at centre12345, this will be the folder title. So it'll be 12345 underscore F180 542 underscore Smith underscore J underscore part A. And then in that folder, you'll need to submit six PDF documents and the final database. Now, the examiner is going to be awarding marks looking at the six PDF documents. They won't be looking at the database. So it's vitally important that you provide all the correct evidence in those documents that the examiner is looking for. And then the six PDF files, it tells you here for each activity how they should be named. Don't get panicky or worrying at this point if you can't remember the name of the files. It does tell you in each activity how the files should be named. But generally, it's the activity underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name. The next page contains instructions for learners. You're advised to read the scenario brief and activity information carefully. Plan your time carefully to allow preparation and completion activities. Each activity has an indication of how much time you should spend on it. So it's important to try and stick to that. There may be some activities that you can do quicker and some activities that you might need to spend a bit more time on. You won't have any internet access and you'll be asked to complete these activities under submission and your work will be kept securely at all times. You are working independently through the, the exam and you mustn't share your work with others, so it is exam conditions. An invigilator may clarify wording that appears in Part A, but they won't be able to provide you with any guidance in completion of the activities. You won't have any Part B materials during the completion of Part A. Then again, it just goes through these outcomes for submission, creating your folder, submit your work, how to name the folder, and remember you'll be told by your centre, your centre number, your registration number, and where that folder needs to be saved. And then again, it tells you you need to submit six PDF documents and your final database in the folder, and it tells you how to name the six PDF documents, the file names there. The next page is a blank page. 
and then the next page starts with the actual part A brief. You are advised to spend 10 minutes reading the scenario and the activities you are to complete. And it's a good idea to do this. It gives you a good idea of what's coming up and some little pointers as to what you may be asked to do or what to include in your design. You can make notes or highlight information on the paper. Uh, so take a pen and highlight pens with you. So we've then got a scenario. Do read it through, as I say, it does give you some pointers as to what should be included in the design, uh, what sort of validation is going to be uh, in one of the activities. On the next page of the paper, there will be some sample data. And you'll need to have a good look at this because you'll be able to make decisions about your design from the given sample data. We've then got activity one, which is the database relationship screen print, and it recommends you spend 45 minutes on this. You need to study the data extract, as I said, uh, in the previous page, and then you're going to create a database structure which minimizes data duplication, accepts the data provided, and uses recognized naming conventions, and ensures data integrity. You must make sure you only use all and the only fields in figure one. Don't be introducing any new fields in your database. You've only got to use or have to use the ones that are provided. And then you're going to screen print your database relationships. There's no activity template for uh, activity one. You will create a Word document and save this as a PDF using the file name given in the activity. Don't be tempted to dive straight into creating your Microsoft Access database without going through a design phase. It's very difficult to change your database structure once it's been created, and particularly if it's got data in as well. Uh, you can do it, but it can get a bit messy, and it will take time, time when you could be doing other activities and um, gaining marks. The next page has activity two. This is the table structures and validation. 45 minutes recommended for this. But if you've spent time on that design, you probably get through this part uh, quite a bit quicker than 45 minutes. Papers always follow the same structure. You're always going to be asked to provide suitable validation that covers a presence check, a length check, a value lookup or a range check, a table lookup and a format check. So before you go into the exam, just make sure you know how to do these validations. It'll give you a list of uh, what validations to be included and then complete template activity two. When you do your screen prints, make sure they show absolutely everything that's required and nothing is truncated. What do we mean by truncated? Well, where the image doesn't show, for example, maybe all the validation. Remember, the examiner is marking the templates, the PDF files that you're submitting. You won't be looking at the database for to be able to award your marks. So this one, you're going to complete the Activity 2 template and save it as a PDF. Uh, and again, you're advised to spend 45 minutes on that activity. Activity three is the queries and reports, and it recommends you spend 40 minutes. You might want a little bit more time on this one. So if you can save some time on other activities, um, you will spend a little bit more time on this. Activity three, there's always four parts to it. Part A and B are the queries. The query A is usually a fairly straightforward query. Then part the B query is one that's a little bit more complicated. And you're going to provide evidence of those completing the Activity 3 template. Uh, make sure you provide, again, no truncated evidence that the examiner can see exactly everything in your queries that you've created in Design View and Datasheet View. Part C of Activity 3 is a report and you give an instruction on suitable title, uh, what's being displayed and any calculations to be displayed. The report must fit on one page and you're going to complete the Activity 3 template evidencing this report. You must 
most likely have to create a query to base your report on. But make sure that your screen prints show your design of your query, the design of your report and any data sheet views as well. And for this, you're going to save the query. Let me scroll down a minute. Uh, the query and the report as a PDF in your folder. And it, again, it tells you the name of that PDF file. And then part D, the final part, is saving your database report, not as a screen print, but as a PDF in your folder. And it's got a slightly different name. It's activity 3D underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first name. My advice spent 40 minutes on uh, activity 3. Say it's quite a big activity. You might want to spend a little bit more time on that. Just coming back to this report, it's a good idea to have uh, in your head some formatting features that you're going to use for your design of your report. And those formatting features you need to carry through to part B into the forms. The examiner is looking for a consistent house style across the report and the forms. You don't have to do a lot of formatting, it doesn't have to be particularly fancy, uh, just some pretty straightforward changes to make your reports and your forms look professional. Activity 4 is the structure testing, 20 minutes for this activity. And again, if you're well practiced, you will get through this easily in 20 minutes. Again, it always follows the same sort of format in as much as you will be told exactly what to test. There's no need to add any extra tests as these will not give you extra marks. You complete a test look for this to show how you've uh, tested your structure and validation using the Activity 4 template. And again, it's saved as a PDF and it gives you the file name there. Activity 5 is the structure evaluation, again 20 minutes. And again, it's a good idea to practice this before you go into the exam to have some sentences, some keywords and things in your head that you're going to write about. You're always going to be asked about how well your database structure has minimised duplication. So you can have that pre-prepared in your head, what you need to write about. Because you need to cover technical language such as entity, attribute, relationships, primary key, foreign key, those sort of things uh, that are covered in data duplication. And the second part is how well your database structure meets these requirements. And again, it will give you a list of things that you need to write about. No need to write about anything that isn't listed there. That's what the exam is looking for. There's no template for activity five. You create this in a Word document and save it as a PDF. And again, it gives you the file name here. And if you will practiced, 20 minutes, you'll have this completed easily in that time. Just one more uh, little exam tip. And um, as you're working through this paper, you also need to do activity one first, then do activity two. Can at this point go straight on to activity four and five and leave activity three till the end. The testing does not test the queries and the evaluation does not cover the queries either. So if you're struggling with the queries, spend some time on them. If you're struggling, go on to the testing, go on to the evaluation and then come back to the queries. That way you'll be picking up some marks for your testing and for your evaluation and then you can come back and spend what remaining time you have on the queries and hopefully picking up more marks. That completes the introduction to the Martley Pool uh, College Ladies Football Club database. An introduction to part B, again going through the paper and giving you some little tips and things on exam technique uh, strategy for that paper as well.